Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today we will take a look at some new Just No H O A content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now let's dive right into the stories. Recalled and removed our tyrannical H O A board. Part one to three. This is the account of how we fought, and ultimately prevailed, in our long-running battle with an out-of-control HOA board. I've been meaning to post this here for a while but it was such an ordeal trying to condensing it into one post that I'll have to break the timeline into several posts to cover it all and I'll still be leaving out a good 50% of what went on. Part 1. So, what does it mean when it says that a house is in an HOA? We naively asked the real estate agent at the newly built community that we were looking at back in 1998 in AS. My wife and I had both grown up in northern New Jersey not far from NYC. This is an old section of an old state that's already been pretty well built up and since the houses are all largely pre-1980s there really aren't any HOAs there. We also lived in New York about an hour out of NYC and since this was all farm country there weren't HOAs there at the time either. Neither of us had ever heard of such a thing. The agent quickly glossed over it basically selling us on how great HOAs are for property values and how they made sure that all of the houses were well maintained. Previously where we lived in NJ you would occasionally come across that one house in a neighborhood that stood out like a sore thumb. Foot-high weeds, junk cars, trash everywhere, broken windows and typically a hand-scrawled sign hanging on the front of the house going off on either a religious rant or seething about whoever happened to be the president at the time. We certainly weren't going to be one of those people and if living in an HOA prevented that then, hey maybe it won't be all that bad after all. Well it didn't take too long after moving in to see where living in an HOA could begin to become a problem when we received a violation notice for putting our garbage cans out 30 minutes too early. Pickup was on Monday so the cans could not go out before noon on Sunday. While the board didn't do anything illegal during the time that we lived there we soon found out that they were obsessed with enforcing the rules to the very letter. To illustrate how fixated with it they were several years later I received another violation letter this time for putting our garbage cans out two minutes too early. In this instance I was heading out the door and looking at the clock I saw that it was 11.55 am. I figured, a, hey, close enough. By the time that I get outside, unlock the gate, and get the cans out to the curb it should be 11.57 or 11.58. Two days later was when I received the violation letter so apparently, they had someone literally patrolling the neighborhood at exactly noon looking for, violators. They also had very specific landscaping rules that they also fanatically enforced as well. There was a list of approved and disallowed plantings and exactly how many of each that you could have and how many you must have. If one died you had to replace it with one from the approved list. If something sprouted on its own that meant that you now had one too many and one had to go. One day some new people moved in and apparently never having lived in an HOA before they must not have read the rules too closely because they extensively landscaped the front yard without getting approval. It looked great when they were done. They had the nicest looking front yard in the whole development. The problem was that they put in plants on the disallowed list and far too many plants overall. The HOA made them take it all out. Even though they had substantially improved the appearance of their property and had enhanced the property value the board's official policy of, the rules are the rules, meant that they didn't have much other option illustrating that it's less about property values and more about conformity, control and punishing violators. Upset about the whole thing they took a scorched earth response in protest and ripped literally every single plant out of the yard. The one tree that was left had every branch cut off. It looked like a bomb had gone off. Well now they were in trouble for not having enough plants in their yard and they begrudgingly had to put in the bare minimum and moved away shortly thereafter. We lived there for 8 years. The house was your typical cheaply built new build that are all too common in as since they lowered the building codes in the late 80s. Wanting something nicer and specifically better built we started looking for another house. The first thing that we told our agent was, no HOAs. 
After living in one for eight years we had had our fill of them. If only we had stuck to our guns, we could have avoided a ton of aggravation. Part 2. We started looking and we came across a house that we really liked. The issue was of course that it was in an HOA but the agent assured us that this was a good one not at all like the last one that we lived in and he had a point. This development was built in the early 80s so the CC and R's were rather condensed. The use restrictions were all of two pages and were essentially the same as the city municipal blight codes. Of course, there was the usual, garbage cans must be stored out of sight, no livestock, etc. But nothing really objectionable. Little did we know that in previous years the entire board had had to be removed and that there had been two earlier lawsuits as well all of which we were unaware of. So, we bought it and honestly for the better part of eight years it looked like the agent was right after all. This was the rare benign HOA. There were no amenities, very little common area, just a few end caps, and association fees were low, $38 a month. It made it easy to forget that you were actually living in an HOA subsequently homeowner apathy was rampant. There were a fair number of rental units and snowbirds both of which were totally checked out and uninvolved. Nobody ever went to any of the HOA meetings or paid any attention to what was going on, myself included, which opened the door to the issues that would later come. Unbeknownst to us all the board was slowly being taken over by a guy who was the living embodiment of Barney Fife from the old Andy Griffith show. It's the classic story, older guy, nothing better to do, busybody control freak gets on the board and everybody watch out now. There's a new sheriff in town who's going to clean this place up. Hilarity, or is it headaches, follow. He initially got on the board because he ran uncontested and seemed to think that he was appointed dictator of the community. So, McFife, as I'll refer to him from here on out, is such an unpleasant disagreeable a hole to deal with that one by one as board members terms came up, they simply didn't run again because they had had it dealing with him. This allowed him to replace them with his hand-picked puppets who just did whatever he told them to. Once he had full control of the board McFife went wild. They started fining people for things that weren't actually prohibited, refused to grant anyone a hearing with the board and simply ignored the bylaws and state law regarding the fine process. The typical scenario went like this, they would send out a violation letter, if you didn't do what they wanted within a week the fines would start rolling in on a weekly basic increasing in dollar amount each time with veiled threats of foreclosure soon to follow, even though you cannot foreclose for unpaid fines and as. Most people were just getting intimidated and folded. When they tried fining us for things that aren't in the CC and R's I finally had enough and called them out on it and let everyone else know what was going on. Their response was to carpet bomb the community with fines, especially the people that they didn't like while their friends were exempt. The more fines that they sent out the more people complained, the more people complained the more fines they sent out. In eight months, they issued five times the number of fines that had been issued for the previous three years combined. The infamous Labor Day lambasting. As was par for the course they scheduled the next meeting with minimal notice, 16 hours, and on a holiday in the hopes that no one would show up. To their surprise a good 40 homeowners appeared intent on letting the board know just what they thought of their latest antics. At the end of the meeting each homeowner had two minutes to address the board. It quickly degenerated into 40 minutes of one homeowner after the other excoriating the board relentlessly. They really had no defense and the meeting wrapped up with a former board member advising them that if they were unclear as to their duties that perhaps they should schedule a consultation with the HOA attorney which they did. The attorney had to spend four hours explaining the CC and R's, bylaws and state law to them because they were incapable of figuring them out for themselves and ultimately, they had to reverse all of the outstanding fines that they had sent out since they weren't valid. This was all a bit of a setback for McFife and for a few months things were pretty quiet. No new fines were coming out and we all figured that we had reined them in. Little did we know that McFife had other plans. Part 3. So, after a few months of relative peace the board was at it again. Here's a highly abbreviated recap of their reign of terror. 
One of the owners rents out the property and as the latest tenant just moved out, she was doing some repairs and maintenance. The garage door and door leading into the house were open as workers were going in and out. One of the board members, clipboard in hand, just walked into the house unannounced and then started dictating to the owner all of the things that they wanted done, inside and out. You'll have to remove that tree. We don't like that kind. We'll provide you with a list of what we like. In fact, we really don't like the way your yard is landscaped at all. We want you to redo the whole yard. And here's what we want you to do inside. They're lucky the owner didn't tell them to shove their clipboard up their butt. One of the other owners was having landscaping done in her backyard. The board demanded access to her yard so that they could see what she was doing which they have no authority to do. She's originally from NYC and doesn't put up with any crap and told them to go duck off. Her property backs up to the common area and later on she caught them standing at her back wall looking over into her yard. The north side common area is on a very busy street. This stretch had an abundance of well-established trees that had been there for over 30 years that acted as a natural sound barrier and privacy wall. Well in a stroke of brilliance, to save money, the board decided to turn all of the water off for the summer which is regularly 100 plus degrees here in Arizona. None too surprisingly probably 60% of the trees died. So now they say, we have to cut down the dead trees. But not only that they decide to go one step further. The residents whose property backs up there had gotten into it with the board for shutting off the water in the first place so as retaliation they not only had the dead trees cut down but every live tree that was opposite the backyards of the homeowners that complained. So many homeowners protested about the trees being cut down that they begrudgingly planted a handful of new trees. Well six months later they got mad at certain residents again and as punishment, they went through and cut down every one of the new trees that they had just planted. Of course, the homeowners whose property backs up here again complained vigorously. A year and a half later they still hadn't planted any new trees, given the residents any idea if or when they planned on putting in any new trees, and couldn't or wouldn't give any kind of coherent explanation as to why they cut down the newly planted trees and live trees to begin with. McFife and his minions also weren't all that fond of what they considered, non-whites, either, this is what happens when those people move into a community. I also personally overheard him making anti-Semitic comments after one of the meetings directed at a friend of ours. Once after one of the meetings my wife heard McFife fuming to the other board members, these people are going to have to learn to do as I say. Anyone who doesn't follow my rules and do what I tell them to do, when I tell them to do it, will be punished. They started hiring a uniformed police officer, at $180, more wasted money, to attend the meeting specifically to throw anyone out who dared ask a question that they didn't like. Someone would ask a question that they couldn't or wouldn't answer and their response would be, we're not going to answer that at the current time. Or they would give a complete non-answer and then want to move on. Here's a typical exchange. Homeowner would ask a question that they didn't like. Board would refuse to answer or give a non-answer and then say, we're going to move on. Homeowner. But you didn't answer the question. Board. One more word out of you and we'll have the officer throw you out. A friend of ours was the only person actually ever thrown out because her response was, so you either can't or won't answer the question. Which is it? The president blew up shouting, that's it. You're out. Officer get her out of here now. Out. Get out. Get out now. Our friend and the cop were laughing as he led her away. He followed them out into the hallway yelling the whole time. That was the beginning of the end for them. People who had shown up to the meeting saying that they wanted to see for themselves if things were as bad as we were saying they were shaking their heads and looking around in disbelief. And then there was the harassment, vandalization and defamation that was directed towards myself and my wife that started after the infamous Labor Day meeting. It was well known that I was the one that alerted the neighborhood as to what was going on so now, I was labeled the neighborhood troublemaker. Frequently someone would steal my garbage cans and take them four blocks away and throw them into a busy street. The president of the HOA's kid wailed a big rock at my house. I heard it hit and had two witnesses, and I had to file a police report. The security lights on the side of my property were damaged. 
Someone, take a guess who, filed an anonymous complaint with the city saying that my property had dead trees and an accumulation of garbage violating the city codes for blight. Of course, none of this was true and the city inspector came by and promptly closed the case as my property wasn't in violation of any city codes or any of the community CC and R's which is why they couldn't find me for anything which frustrated them to no end. And then there were the monthly newsletters where we were specifically singled out month after month. They took things out of context, misrepresented others or just flat out fabricated complete lies. The highlight of all of this bullshit came at the annual meeting where they I got to be the feature of a 20-minute PowerPoint presentation where they went so far as to take my actual emails, chop them up and piece them together to try to make it look as if I said things that I never did. I would have liked to see him try to defend that one in court. They tried to portray us as the neighborhood crackpot troublemakers who just don't want to follow the rules. We were single-handedly bringing the whole community down, turning it into a ghetto, driving the property values down, etc etc. And this went on for a full 20 minutes. Virtually everything that was presented was willfully distorted and taken out of context. At one point I had enough and pointed out that he had misrepresented what I actually said by editing my emails and they threatened to have the cop that they hired for the occasion, who would be a regular attendee from this point on, throw me out. It was difficult to keep from going off on them but I had to because I was looking at the long game which was to get them removed. Getting into a big argument with them and getting thrown out would have been counterproductive to that end because there were still a lot of people who really didn't know the full story. After they had their say I nailed them to the wall because I had concrete proof of them falsifying meeting minutes and election results and handed out copies to everyone in attendance which laid the groundwork for their eventual downfall. To be continued tomorrow. Thanks for listening.